Uh, good evening, everyone. So, today we will continue to uh, conduct the lessons. Um, to continue a simple introduction, understanding on how do we uh, understand Buddhism better. Shai Muni Buddha um, given the talk for 49 years. Yes, uh, given, you know, as many as um, 84,000 methods of uh, practice Buddhism. So where do we start uh, practicing Buddhism? That's a very important point. Where do we start with all these vast teachings? For us as a pure land uh, cultivators, um, whether we can go to pure land, we need to understand uh, where do we um, find the roots, where do we get our foundation steady. Once our foundation is strong, we can grow and develop into the goal that the, the, the goal that we want to attain. As a Buddhist, first step is to learn about Buddha. If we don't understand Buddha's teaching and himself, his intention and all that, we will not only have um, be confused, we we'll also have strong misunderstanding that will affect the progress of our teaching. It may look simple, sound simple, but to act on it is not an easy feat. So hopefully we can use this um, short uh, period of time that we have here uh, to talk about this. So what's our duty as a Buddhist? Uh, so how did our teacher, Shaemani Buddha, taught us 2,500 years ago? How did he taught his students, his disciples, um, so that the in the future, uh, not in future, at that moment, all his students became you know, attained to a certain level, arahat and all that. Last week, uh, we have talked about, um, we all have, understand Buddha what does Buddha represent through his name through his action because there are strong misunderstanding uh, towards the Buddhist uh, community and the Buddhism in general and we have talked about that last week clear on that one last week uh, we also learn about um, Buddha has attained uh, enlightenment after all the you know, trials that he gone through, or the seeking he gone through, and find out this phrase. This is his report, you know, thesis, and that he experienced and observed. We all have innate wisdom perfect, well-rounded, but we have lost it. So last week we leave it at here. Why? From a person, from a being who has the ability to overcome life and death, ability to um, be free from the bonds of, you know, this suffering, samsara in Sanskrit. Um, but why do we fall into this current state? bound by all the external circumstances, not able to overcome life and death. For example, closer to us, as a human, we are we not always uh, guaranteed to be a human. Uh, because it's easy to fall into the lower three realms than going to the higher the human realms. Human, heaven, and asuras. It's harder to get there. It's easier to go to the to the naraka, which is the hell, the hungry ghost, and the animal ring. 
So Buddha told us, we lost our potentials, we lost our uh, uh, capabilities, we lost our wisdom. But we now have lost it. So today we become like this. You were Buddha. However, when you lost it, how do we lost it? Outside environment, our you know, by stimuli, six senses. Buddha, in the first three weeks of his enlightenment under the Bodhi tree, has already said this statement that are around this uh, meeting. All Buddha, all beings, you know, not just sentient, all beings, have Buddha nature. They're just like the Buddha, full fortune, full wisdom. So the current situation that befalls us is temporarily lost. That's a long temporarily, but it's still temporarily. We didn't lose it forever, but we kind of like drop it somewhere and forgot where it is. Um, because we are lost, hence we commit a lot of karmas that are not wholesome. And hence all the effect comes back to us in this form that we felt today. Look at Shai Muni Buddha through the sutras, through the you know master talks. Every day he lived without a shelter over his head. He lived under the trees in, in, in India. He only ate one meal per day before the noon. But he lived in a much happier life than the rest of the world combined together. All the rich and wealth cannot move him. Why? Because he's not moved by the outside circumstance. He's in control of his life, destiny. His, his spiritual life is filled full. So how, what should we do if we want to return to our full wisdom, full fortune? Wisdom. What kind of wisdom is that, first of all? This wisdom that can get us through, you know, our current circumstances, and in future it will get us through life and death, and even better, get us through to pure land. So now we have this fortune to encounter Buddhism. Uh, we all have encounter now, right? There's no doubt on that. The question is, how do we make use of this opportunity? We know we are lost, but we are not. Uh, lost it forever. Uh, there's a two, there's a term. One is lost, one is destroyed. It's not destroyed. It's lost. Uh, so it's like lost and found, right? So how do we find it back? By saying lost, we must clarify that lost means you temporarily drop it somewhere. That means you 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 have all this wisdom, all these great fortunes, you know good low, good wealth and all that, uh, full wisdom, like Buddhas, you have that, but you are not tapping into it. It was hidden underneath. So, under what? Under delusions. Uh, only when you break through these delusions that clouded, that covered our... our... Uh, how to say, wisdom, then only we will fully untap our potential. Uh, so the question for today is, how do we find it back? How do we break through this cloud of delusions? Remember, the reason we have afflictions, we call it sufferings, we call it unpleasantness, unhappiness, uh, is these delusions. It's like a drunk people, right? He's drunk. She's drunk. Have you seen someone who's drunk? What happened with a drunk? 
what's their um, behavior, mannerism. When I was a young boy, uh, I had a neighbor that was an old man uh, in my, as my neighbor. He always drunk. He kept scolding people, hitting people when he's drunk. So he lost control of himself. Uh, when you ask him after he woke up, he know nothing of what he did during his, you know, drunken state. Just like a this drunken man, uh, we were drunk by all these delusions. Doesn't mean that you lost yourself. You just covered it. It's just hidden. Uh, so, Buddha nature, which is our true self, uh, we are Buddha, and it's lost. Uh, it's temporarily covered because we are drunk. So, by removing these delusions, we come back, go, go back to our own home, back to our self, true self. To go back from delusional into fully awakened, it's a journey that we must discuss and discover ourselves. Buddha does not teach anything else but this one. Only taught this one. Of all the methods he teaches, they are all aiming for this one. Remove the delusion. Return back to Buddha nature, which is our true self. So in Mahayana Sutra, uh, Buddha uh, came to this world, to many worlds, to many universes, to multi-universe. Uh, what's, what's their goal? And first, they put a statement out there, I do not and did not and will not transcend any beings to enlightenment. I did not, I do not. Why? Because the person who become a Buddha, they do it by themselves. They have to be willing to remove reduction by themselves. When someone asks me, how do I have a happy life, live a happy life, attain a happy life, you can't find it from the outside. That's the first step. Look within. Only when you look inside yourself, deep into yourself, only then you understand the factors you need to have to become happy. So does the attaining Buddhahood. So how, what role does Buddha play in this? Right? How does Buddha help in this? He will tell us the truth. He gives us the tools. Oh, he said in 2,500 years ago or 3,000 years ago of the universe, you know, how it came into being and all this uh, formation and unformation. But more important is our life, life cycle. Everyone has birth, age, sickness, death. When there is birth, there's death. When there's life, there's death. Hence, impermanence is established. And how do we overcome this? Are we aware of this in the first place, fully? If we go through this process and all the temptations and all that uh, confusions, but we need to go through this and truly uncover it and let it go. Only then we can become Buddha. That means back to the nirvana. However, it's not a it's not a one. It's not easy to do it straight away. Um, it's in the paper it's easy it's true there's just one thing you let go of your delusion that's it done but in practice are we willing to let it go mm. in theory in 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 its essence there's only this one word are we willing to let it go uh, are we willing to let go of our delusions 
Because once we have delusions, right, attachments, discriminations, wandering thoughts, we starting to have afflictions, become slave to our desires, become slaves to our desires. Why? What a slave means? A lot of people. Why are they suffering? Because part of them become the uh, slaves to the desire, slaves to the faith, slaves to the wealth, slaves to the relationship, the romantic relationships. They all get tied up, bond uh, by these temptations. They can't control. They can't control themselves. Once you understand this, a person who truly see through all this phenomena, its bottom is reality. Will they be willing to be born to this? Put themselves in the slavery situation? No. One who aware of this, they not only will not jump and become bonded, they will also help to transform the environment. Back to his original nature. For example, someone uh, gossip behind you or in front of you or criticize you in front of you. Most of us will get temper flared, right? Our temper will get flaring. Uh, we'll get angry. That's, that's the common cases. A person who is awakened, who is off letting go of delusion, they were not moved by that. So, if you want to get benefit from practicing Buddhism, hence you want to get the benefit of living a happy life, you must pay a cost for it. What's the cost? What's the price? You, everything, you're, there's always a price for that. You must put in your effort, you must put in your patience, you must put in your time, these are the price, in order to cultivate what you want. Someone asked me, why do I have a, a life of misery? Why do I have a miserable life? I ask him, because you are not allowing yourself to live a happy life. Because you are making yourself miserable. For example, there is a couple, husband and wife. They just married for four, 40 years or four years, sorry, four years. And his wife kept grudging on him. Before they were married, you know, they love each other so much. They built a proper, they took so much effort to put your family. And after marriage, because of all these little things, they all argue and argue and argue. You know, all this hard work gone for nothing. As a tr practitioner of Buddhism, we know that to let go is to complete the, the things, the family, or go. First thing is communicate. Uh, a lot of things because we can't um, be patient for a, a, a word that does not sound right, uh, for a look that does not look right. Uh, we just need to communicate, be a bridge. So this is an act of awakening. As long as you're willing, none is impossible. It's just the will. Are you will? Are you willing to do it? <laughs> For example, Shaiyamuni Buddha himself, after finding so many teacher, attempting to you know break the fast. I mean, fasting so long, he can't find it. Now he has a will to find a way to transcend life and death, and he sat on a body tree thirty days, and he attained it. Oh, Buddhism is a. Uh, mentorship. Mm. Mentor refers to teacher. Uh, so in, in, in summary, Buddhism is education and Buddhism is about mentorship, master disciples. Uh, teacher only teach us, uh, teaches the way. Student has to put an effort to walk the way that was pointed out. No one can help you. Buddha has already put it very clear in his sutra, how do you overcome suffering, 
small suffering, big suffering, uh, whether you can become successful, that means you are awakened. Uh, to put our example as a pure land practitioner, can we, whether we can go to pure land is not rely on Buddha, as in Chaimi Buddha, or even Amitabha Buddha, because they already lay the groundwork for us. Uh, they already say, as soon as you chant my name, wholeheartedly, in the very last breath, you will go there. So it's up to you now. The problem is not on the outside, not on the Buddhas. It's on us. Teacher has done the job. The student must walk, walk the walk. That walk the walk cannot be done by your teacher. It has to be done by yourself. True. That's true. Teacher cannot help beyond clarifying, telling you how to go. But mentor can help beyond is to clarify the theories, the methods, uh, the, the, the truth behind it, your life, you know, how the truth of your life, how do we overcome it? He also used their own experience as your point of reference so that you have something to compare against, say, okay, I can do this. And the goal is to correct our delusions and erroneous viewpoint, is to put our navigation GPS to the right direction, right? Because he been he was there, he'd been there, right? We're walking in his path towards enlightenment. Our job is to walk. Mm. So there's no superstition in all this. It must be verified, it must be practiced. We all know this, to be honest, we all know this. It's just, are we willing to walk it? Are we willing to do it? And, and, and go through the failure and success, you know? Part of the process. Just like the one of the, uh, I think, mother of uh, Buddha asked uh, Bodhisattva Siddhi Garba, uh, why does human go to hell? Why does hell exist at all? No one is constructing it. The person who go there, they are deluded, heavy delusion. No one with clear mind would want to go there. The reason they were there because they created that place for themselves through delusion. Hence, Buddhism is about mentorship. It's about guiding people towards enlightenment, towards liberation from life and death, uh, from suffering to bliss. And we must believe on this theory, teachings, so that we can use it. Uh, as a Buddhist, we also need to have a right view in regard to the Buddha. Who is Buddha in relation to myself, to ourself, our teacher, our mentor? So when mentor like Buddha has told us what to do and what not to do, it's out of experience, it's out of observation. We must avoid the things that he say to avoid and do the things he say to do. Or how uh, did all these great venerables, including Master Qing Gong, they how did they improve so quickly? You know, how did they achieve this level of cultivation? Uh, because they are honest, they follow the teaching. Why are we slow? Why are we still slag slagging behind? Because we are not honest. Because we are we slack a little bit, a lot. Uh, so also uh, in at home when we look at Buddha, we always have a uh, image of the Buddha. We offer the image of the Buddha. 
Uh, every day we put for myself, I have the image of Shai Muni Buddha. I put it in my room. Before I sleep, I also uh, view Amitabha Buddha of him, of his, um, you know, Bodhisattvas and all the Arahat went there uh, around him in pure land. And I always think about how I go there, how I'm part of them. So in your home, your chances are you will have um, Buddha's image, a statue, right? How do you view this statue? What do you regard this statue as? Uh, are there cases where people think of it uh, like a god, like god of fortune, uh, god of you know sending me children and all that, you know, god of fertility, god of fortune? God of wealth, right? Or God of protectors, protecting our family from the evil spirits. Sometimes I also have cases where um, uh, lay Buddhists who uh, come to my uh, area and invite me to a temple. Uh, some of them ask me, uh, do you have any uh, Buddha's image? Uh, so he asked for me, can I uh, have one of this image? I said, I have, but what do you need it for? I want to put it on my car. Why? Because you can, uh, you know, you can uh, protect us uh, from safety, uh, protect us, in, uh, keep us safe. Uh, could you bless this um, Buddhist, uh, the, the Buddha image card, you know, the, the Tanka or the card of Buddha's image. Uh, could you give him some uh, blessings, or wordings? Uh, I do that, but when I ask them, what's the purpose? What's the real purpose of putting Buddha's image? They can't answer it. Uh, most people will answer uh, every two e you know, the first day of the lunar calendar or 15th day of the lunar calendar. Uh, we just put some offerings on fruit and scents uh, as a you know, ritual. I saw there's a, a other lay Buddhist, um, they just bought a house. Uh, your house, right? They want to, they want to, uh, you know, they invite a statue of Buddha in there. And then they ask me, what should I offer to the Buddha statue? I told him, you don't need to do much, don't need to offer much, just a glass of clean water. Why? He asked. I said, pure heart. Remind yourself to have a pure heart, like this glass of water. <laughs> There was a case where there is a, you know, a Buddha's birthday or there is an event uh, in the temple where we offer, you know, water to the Buddha, right? But what do they think of that? They say, you must leave the cup open because um, Buddha wants to drink it during the event, during the ceremony. So this is a lot. This is very common uh, among the Buddhist community. It became a religion. It became a deity, a god to worship, which is not the point of Buddhism. Uh, some even worse, they all treat it as like, you know, a bribery, bribing Buddha into giving me more fortune. So, Nowadays, we hear people saying Buddhism is a religion, even worse, it's a superstition. We cannot deny it. We truly cannot deny it. Why? Because Buddhism of today has become a religion in that sense. It's very unfortunate. Uh, it becomes a superstitious uh, practice. It's very unfortunate to the Buddhist community and even to the founder, Sai Muni Buddha. If you observe modern society, uh, the Buddhist practitioner, how many people practice Buddhism? A lot, right? But how many people truly uh, treat Buddha and Bodhisattva as teacher, other than gods? Very few.
most treat them as a sort of deity. And this one has departed too far, too far uh, from uh, the original Buddhism. Just like my uh, neighbors, there's a lot, uh, they pray to the, you know, Guan Yu. Uh, his day fight as Guan Gong, uh, you know, Master Guan. Uh, and he's a very famous historical figure in three kingdoms in China. So a lot of people pray to him uh, to, for protection uh, from the evils, from the misfortunes. Mm. There was a case where his um, children, uh, grandchildren, there's an old auntie, grandchildren were sick, you know. Uh, this old lady keep asking, I offer you so many wine, so many good stuff. Why do you not protect my children, my grandchildren? This is very common. Um, I also encounter a lot of uh, Buddhists uh, who brought many fruits uh, to the Buddha temple in front of uh, Bodhisattva Guan Yin, Avalokitesh uh, Vada. Um, he it's not just purely offering our respect. He is like trading, negotiation, you know what I mean? Like business. If I give you this much fruit, you must protect me uh, from from evil or anything. I... <laughs> so I... So my mom is very um, uh, my mom is very sharp in this intent. A lot of people there was like loto of a uh, racing car, and they call pray to the Guan Guan Gong, you know the uh, Master Guan for you know blessing them to win the jackpot. My mom is very sharp and told them the horse only run for eighty horsepower, but the car has five hundred horsepower. So the Guan Gong cannot protect you on that regard. It's a satire. But yeah, the problem is uh, we haven't done the job ourselves. Cause and effect, guys. Cause and effect. Um, if we understand the spirit of Buddhism, the most core Buddhism, the core meaning, and if we act it out, live the teaching in every breath of our existence, people will understand truly what Buddhism is really about. Why? Because it will truly bring you safety, not just safety, happiness. True happiness from inside. A life of uh, stability. Good relationships, including our practice of chanting Amitabha's Buddha's name. How do we make our family, our surrounding people truly understand the meaning of practicing pure land? We need to do it ourselves. We need to leave out the example of what is uh, Amitabha Buddha in our life. So this is why we offer the Buddha. There are two meanings of why we place offering to the image of Buddha. Why do we still continue this practice? There are two of them. Number one is to repay our gratitude. Mm. Doesn't matter which Buddha, which Bodhisattva, the whole point of us putting the image in front in our house, in the most respectful corner of our house, is to remind ourselves of their teaching, of their what they have contributed to us. To society, uh, to all of us, all beings. Uh, to our 49 years of education by Buddha towards the world, what has he left to us? What's his contribution? What did he go through? What did he have to face and encounter to provide us these teachings that enlighten us, that allow us to enlighten ourselves and other families? To give us the truth so that we can awaken and no longer live confusingly in blind, in darkness. So such a meaningful teachings that transcend the time, race, religions, uh, 
that can help you this life, not only this life, many life, not only you, many of your family. It's, this is why we need to remind ourselves all the time. Yeah. The first one is to remind ourselves of his teaching, to be paid gratitude towards his teaching. And it is supposed so rare, guys, it's so rare among 7 billion, how many people encounter this? And the chance of encountering it is so hard, as seen in this slide, 1 in 1,300 billion years. It's a long time, guys. It's very hard. Uh, so, we keep him in our memory, just like the Chinese, the East Asian people, they offer plague to their ancestors. Sorry, not ancient ancestors. Our great grand 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 grandfather. Same, we do the same to Buddha. Uh, this is what we call Baoben Huan Shi, which is reaffirm the roots and retrace the beginning of our lineage. In this case, of our teachings. And this activity, this ritual, is important because it helps to express our feeling of gratitude. Just like you hug your good, good friends, right? Same thing. Uh, every in Chinese communities and I think it's Asian, right? A lot. Um, uh, uh, every April we have Qingming, right? We all sweep the tomb of our ancestors. What does Qingming mean? Uh, what's the meaning of doing that? Why do we sweep the tomb and clean the tomb of our ancestor? is to reaffirm the root and retrace the beginning. Where did my lineage came from? What did I gone through to put me here in this condition? To think your roots back to your roots. So when I was young, my parents would always bring me every Qingming uh, in April to sweep the tomb. Uh, I always ask my mom, why do we have to do this? Why do we have to sweep the tomb? My mom, mom gave me a very simple explanation because I was young. I didn't know much. I just know that oh, we have to repay the gratitude. And then she told me that without your grandparents, without your great-great-great-grandparents, there's no mom and dad today. And without them, where are you? So we need to be respectful and gratitude towards them. So who do we pay gratitude to? Our loved ones, parents, our teacher, who gave us wisdom, knowledge, right? And then our country. If there's no stability in our country, how can we have a good life? And all the sentient beings, without different professions providing services, how do we have all the services available to us and give us such convenience? This is the point of paying gratitude. That's all of that within one image of Buddha. The whole point is to do that. Have, the question now is, back to the word, have you walked the walk? You know? How do we pay the gratitude? Do it. Walk the walk. Do as much as you know, as much as you learned from these teachings. And that is the biggest form of gratitude. So what is number two? Um, learn from the best role models. When you look at this role model, you want to act like them, walk like them, talk like them. For our, for our case, our teacher is Shaiyamuni Buddha. He's a normal person. Remember that he's just like us many, many lives ago, just like us. Now he become such a high level of um, achievements beyond any worldly achievements they can attain. Right? Why can't we become like him? Like Amitabha Buddha as well. He has become Buddha. So does us. That's the point of Pure Land. Otherwise, Pure Land cannot form. Everyone is a Buddha. Hence, he can invite you to become Buddha in Pure Land. 
the whole these are to remind us you can re you can become as great as he is as full well-rounded as he is equal equal guys every day we put offerings to the uh, image of the buddha one buddha or you know the sansheng uh, buddha and bodhisattvas uh, the point is to remind ourselves have you enlightened yourself uh, have you have you you know show i mean let your temper flare have you become jealous today uh, are you being honest today are you being truly honest to yourself because Buddha did not lie to themselves, right? They are true, true themselves. Uh, are you more compassionate? What if someone prostrate to Buddha every single day, but when they're outside that chanting hall or their own Buddha statue offering place, the meditation space, they gossip about behind other people's back. They, you know, let their temper flare. So we see the irony of that, right? That's the point of having this image to remind us we are not like that. We need to return. It is not to promote superstition. Right? It's not image worshipping, as the other religion might say. It's not idol worshipping. Because if we treat it as a god, then we already twisted the meaning. Like Bodhisattva Guan Yin, very famous, right? Guan Yin. Uh, why do we offer Guan Yin Bodhisattva? We need to learn from her, from him. Uh, what is the most important example? Learn from the best role model. What is the role model set up by Bodhisattva Guan Yin? Compassion, selflessness, right? No jealousy, no divisions, uh, full of love, full of kindness, embracing all beings, no matter their situation, their status. Because a person with compassion will not prevent other people from achieving success, will help them to achieve success. Uh, will not gossip behind people's back. It will help them to improve the best version of themselves. Uh, we are all very clear of our, our own faults, right? So by looking at Guan Yin Pusa, we learn that we need to improve ourselves. We can be better than this. Better than yesterday version. Uh, the unfortunate part uh, of Buddhism nowadays was it was regarded as polytheism, practicing polytheism, worshipping many gods, or even worse, primitive religion, lower religion. Uh, uh, so, what was regarded as a sophisticated religion or higher religion has only one god, monotheism. See, look at the, the slide that I've shown. There are a lot of, you know, image of Buddha, Bodhisattvas. They were misunderstood. They are not God. We are not praying to many, many gods. Right. Why? Why do we have so much uh, Bodhisattva and Buddhas appear in the image, uh, in the murals? Because Buddha has employed many terminologies, name of the Buddha in his teaching. Uh, part of the terminology is the name of the Buddha. So they are, according to the Tripitaka, there's a sutra uh, that gives a lot of names, and there are as much as 12,000 names of Buddhas, even more for the Bodhisattvas. Uh, usually every year in the Dhamma place, uh, when we are celebrating New Year, uh, we always have a uh, praying for uh, the names of the Buddha. There are meaning behind this. Uh, uh, Bodhisattva Guan Yin, Bodhisattva Di Zhang. Uh, a lot of people love to prostrate to uh, 
the image of Bodhisattva Dijang, right, Siddhikapa. Mm. I asked them, why do you do that? Why do you prostrate? What's the meaning behind? Uh, a lot of them <laughs> answered, because under the, the underworld, uh, in hell, uh, there's a lot, there's a Yama King. Uh, Yama King is the person who reigns over the underworld, right? Or Hades. So the Yama King has um, uh, always respect, has deep respect towards Bodhisattva Dijang. So if I pray to Bodhisattva Dijang, uh, King Yama won't treat me badly when I die. But the point is, what does Bodhisattva Dijang represent? What's his role model? Filial piety. Love and respect towards your elders, your parents. That's what it means. By praying to him, we learn to be more loving and respectful towards our parents, our loved ones. Buddha's name, such as Shayamuni Buddha, or the Medicinal Buddha, or Pure Land Amitabha Buddha, Amitabha. There are substance in it. Uh, and that substance must be known to us for our practice to continue in the proper direction. So what is the meaning behind the naming of thousands of Buddha? What's the meaning of behind the name of Buddhas? We will talk about it next week. So today, uh, we just have a very brief uh, introduction uh, towards everyone. What's the meaning of uh, offering to the Buddha image? First one is to repay our gratitude and then to know the, what they have done to us and what, how do we pay, repay their kindness All right, to, in memory of them. Second one is to learn from the best role models. How do we learn? By offering towards a certain Buddha, we learn of their merits, of their role models. How do I change myself to be a better version like them because as an ordinary beings as a human we always have faults we definitely have faults it's inevitable the key is how much have we changed how have we changed every day or better version so that's the point of having an image in front of you it's a it's a error, deep error, if we treat it as a god to be worshipped. Uh, if we still stuck in that ideas of Buddha as a deity to be worshipped, you know, to get something in return, then we, no matter how many years we are calling ourselves Buddha, Buddhist, uh, practicing Buddhism, we never get it, get the true benefit of Buddhism. So one day, so since then, since today's lesson, right, and many before that, people ask you, uh, what does Buddhism mean? Why do you pray to Buddha? How do you answer? Uh, you must uh, give me that answer. I will give you some homework so you guys can think about. It's a way to for us to learn better, right, engaging with our Lessons. Back in my, um, you know, Dharma place, I think maybe in, in Indonesia, that's what it should be. Uh, I always have Q&A afterwards. Chanting Amitabha, go to Pure Land, what kind of uh, level of competency one does need to have to go to Pure Land? I usually have a study group. Uh, people bring out the questions and then we answer it. The point is to uh, get a clearer, rounder picture on Buddhism, on Buddha teaching. Once we understand Buddha's teaching, we can use it in our life, get benefit from it. So today we learn about the meaning of role models of Buddha through his image, through his action. Sutra. So after today's lessons, you would know the meaning behind offering the statute, an image of Buddha. Uh, this is a simple explanation 
what is part. If I have any mistaken word or meaning that you guys got from me, uh, hopefully you can give me some feedback so we can all improve each other together. I hope that next week we can continue to learn as well, uh, to research, to get in depth uh, on the great benefits brought by the teachings of Buddha. If you can, if you are willing, I mean, your presence here today is already a greatest encouragement of me. Uh, thank you very much. Good night. Let us uh, dedicate our merits. Huishu 若有见闻者